a high-flying, energetic sharpshooter known as the Hurricane. Bang! Oh! Chef Boy RG wins! Gerald has that ignitability. Those guys are rare. Green! He flew through the Miami sky! He was shaped by life-changing events. It happened just so fast. One moment I had my finger, one moment I didn't. If I can relay my story, even if it helps out one person, then I'm doing my job. But his determination and grit led to his dream. Oh! I was hungry. I wanted to show the world what I could do. And now he calls Miami home. Once you're a heat, you're a heat for life. The day I got here, man, it was everything where I thought it would be and more. What's up, man? How you doing? That's a nice vision. I wanted to show Heat Nation that I want to be a part of the community. That's what it's about first. Watch as this slam dunk champion shows me the ropes. Yeah, there it is. Inside the Heat, Gerald Green. Welcome to Inside the Heat. I am Jason Jackson. This episode's radiating to you from Coast Guard Base Miami Beach. More on why we're here in just a little bit. But this episode features Gerald Green. Before he arrived in South Florida, we knew he was a hard-throwing, high-flying dunker and that he could be an explosive scorer. But what we've learned since his arrival, he's a great teammate, and he's all about the heat way. You know, on the floor, that means defense first. But as we do with every good story, you start at the beginning. And for Green, that's in the great state of Texas. The U.S. Coast Guard base on Miami Beach, tucked away off the MacArthur Causeway, is home to one of the most picturesque outdoor basketball courts our city has to offer. It provided the perfect backdrop for me and Gerald to talk basketball and life, including where it all began for him as a child in Houston, Texas. I really had a good childhood growing up in Houston, I really did. In the wintertime, it's never snowing, so he's always outside playing, always into everything. Basketball, of course, uh, like all sports, baseball, football, just was an active kid. When did you know basketball was gonna move to the forefront of things for you as a kid? I really didn't know. I didn't really play basketball in middle school, so I didn't really think basketball was going to be something that was going to support me for the rest of my life. Take me to sixth grade. You were talking about middle school. You hadn't even really started to get into basketball just yet, but you did have an accident. Uh -huh. You were relatively good-natured about it at this point. Right. But take us back to when it went down and what, what happened. I had a ring on, my mama class ring. My mom's my everything. She still is, you know, so. She had a high school ring, and I was like, hey, let me wear it, look cool. We got this little nail that's on top of the door. We had it from a previous little boxing bag me and my brother tore down. I'm teasing my little brother. I'm like, look, man, I bet you can't touch this nail. So I go with my left hand, jump way above the nail, mm. and smack the wall hard, boom. I go up to touch it with my right hand, and then that's when the nail gets caught in the ring and just, just completely yanks off all my skin. I don't really know what's going on. I'm, I'm staying straight bone right now. So right. I, as a kid, I'm like, dang. But I knew I didn't want to cry, because I was at the age where crying was like, oh, you got to be tough, you got to be tough. So I knew you, I didn't you cry. You had to be in shock, too, at that I point. I think I, I, too, yeah. I had to be. You're right. But it happened just so fast. You know, it was just like, dang. One moment I had my finger, one moment I didn't. I didn't go to school for the next, I think, three, four months because of, because of the healing process. Right. And, I get back and now people's making fun of you and this, this, and this. Man, it was tough. It was a tough little process for me growing up, you know? So I think that's why for the lot longest, um, I never really liked to talk about it. Yeah. But now I know that, you know, if I can help a kid or help, you know, somebody that's going through some things about them not feeling comfortable with themselves, and if I can relay my story, even if it helps out one person, then I'm doing my job. What y'all be doing over there? That injury wasn't the only hardship he faced as a child. A few years later, a tragedy struck that would leave a permanent mark on Gerald's life. My grandmother passed away. She ended up getting, she ended up getting murdered. Mm. She wrote me a letter saying that how she wanted me to just do better in school and things like that. Three weeks after she wrote me this letter, she, uh, she passed away. That was just when I knew I had to focus, focus on, on what I'm going to focus on, whatever it is in life. I was going to be this, focus on that. And I knew I wanted to be a basketball player. I wanted to go to college. 
Gerald took his grandmother's words to heart. He joined the basketball team his sophomore year at Dobie High School, but soon transferred to Gulf Shores Academy. As a senior, he averaged 33 points, 12 rebounds, and 7 assists. I still didn't know if I was even good enough. And then when it went from there to now you're a McDonald's All-American, I was like, OK, whoa. Being in the McDonald's All-American game was something that I never dreamed I'd be able to do. Not only are you the leading scorer, you win the slam dunk contest. Gerald Green is the 2005 slam dunk champ. Josh McRoberts was there that day trying to dunk against you. It's, <laughs> it's awesome to watch that video now. We talk about it all the time, yeah. too, man. We always go back to those days. Those were fun young days. That's probably the only time in my life that I'm proud of second place. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with second place when you lose a Gerald Green in a dunk contest. Now, it looked like you were going to be a cowboy, that you were going to head to Oklahoma State. I was this close, man. Was Oklahoma. it really? I was really close to going to college because that was something that my parents wanted me to do. Ultimately, Gerald decided not to attend Oklahoma State. Instead, the number one player in the country joined the last group of high schoolers to forgo college and enter the 2005 NBA draft. I think that was just my destiny. How can I be this close to my dream and not go for it? When I start hearing, man, I was going to be lottery pick. As a kid coming up, you don't really have a lot. You know what I mean? And you can do this to really, really help you out your family, too. She's no brain. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. When Gerald Green was done with high school, he had a very important decision to make. Off to the NBA or some time in college. But it was even more pressure-filled because his draft class, 2005, was the last one that was allowing high school players to enter the draft early. He took advantage of his opportunity. With the 18th pick in the 2005 NBA Draft, the Boston Celtics select Gerald Green from Gulf Shores Academy of Houston, Texas. So 2005 NBA Draft, you are going to Boston Celtics University. They take the 18th pick <laughs> and they use it on you. Talk about that night hearing your name, the whole dynamic that went down. I was disappointed at the time when I got drafted to Boston. At 18, I remember because I told my parents, like, man, if I would have known I was going to go this low, I would have went to school. You know what I mean? Because I thought I was going to go lottery pick. So I regret that I didn't celebrate more than I did, you know, because I was kind of like I used that as anger. I just didn't know any better. Well, I went across the stage and shook David Stern's hand, and I was just so excited at that moment. Like, I really felt like, man, I really finally didn't done it, you know? So that was just a great moment for me. From prep to pros, Gerald's first two seasons were about transition and opportunity. Gerald! The young 19-year-old would make his official introduction to the NBA fan base during the 2007 NBA Slam Dunk Competition in Las Vegas. I wanted to, you know, show, show the world, you know, what I could do. He's asked to come out first. Really impressive. He got it. Oh! I'm telling you, this is the new one. That was nice. I asked Pog, man, could you, you know, be my partner? He was like, yeah, so we didn't even practice. I remember setting everything up. He was like, look, man, we're going to do this dunk. Yeah, there is a dunk contest champion being born right here. And then we was like, go up there with me. And he was like, no, just win me over a table. And we were like, that's it. And that was it. And it was just, just like. making stuff up. Just making there. stuff up. And then that's he just it. put the tagger in it right there. That's it right there. Michael finally gave him a tag. Yeah. How am I supposed to be up there on that stage holding that trophy at that moment? That again was one of the moments where I feel like, dang, I, I did something that I always dreamed about as a kid that I wanted to do. To this day, I still have that trophy. You now I get to show my grandkids one of these days. Take us through the next few years for you in the NBA. Minnesota, Houston, Dallas. What were you learning as you were accumulating kind of these, these cities and, and NBA locations? I learned just, you know, different traits of how to be a professional, different organizations. You know, some, every organization does it differently, but they all do things similar. Gerald, ahead of the field. There you go, Gerald. So I mean, playing with a lot of organizations, I get to pick up a lot of things and help me be who I am today. After four seasons of ups and downs in the league, Green chose to see if the grass was greener overseas. At that moment, it was hard for me to get a, another contract in the league, and well, I just wanted to play again. It didn't matter if it was in the D-League or, or overseas, and I'd never been overseas before, so I was like, hey, why not? It might be a good look for me, so this isn't that I made to do. 
you continue your journey back to the States in 2011, you signed with the Lakers and went to their D-League affiliate, the Defenders. You were named the MVP of the D-League All-Star Game. What were you trying to establish in that period, coming back to the United States? I just was like, I was hungry. Like, I just was like, I want to... I want to prove people you know, I deserve to you know, be back in the league. That was my whole point. I was like, it ain't about the money. I just want to play. Instant offense for Gerald Green. Yeah, he's feeling he's very aggressive, looking for a shot. I just want another chance, another opportunity. One 10 day. That's all I was asking for. Thank God I got my opportunity. Right off a D-League opportunity and some experience gained overseas, Green made his way back to the association. And after 10 stops in nine seasons across three continents, it seemed the NBA journeyman had finally found his home in Phoenix. Swings it cross court to Green, stops and pops, and drops. Phoenix was a great situation for me. I mean, I come from Indiana. Indiana was a good team, don't get me wrong, but I knew I wasn't really playing a lot. And I knew Phoenix was a situation where it was a young team, and I feel like me and some of the guys that they had brought in, we could turn that organization around. Isaiah, one man to beat it, Green with the alley -oop. That was the first time, though, that you started playing with Goran Dragic. What was that tempo and pace like? How did it fit with your game? It seemed like it would be a match made in heaven. Here we go! When I first get there, I remember just the speed of going driving. So that's how he would go coast to coast, one on four. And I'm like, man, that right there was just so special to him because that made me figure out the ways to become a better scorer, a better player. Two on nothing, unselfish by the Rippers Jam by Gerald Green. Goran Dragic with an unselfish pass. Once you get to learn to play with him, it makes the game a lot easier. That's why I feel like I play my best when I play with him.